Amen. If you enjoyed that, say amen. amen. Always enjoy Miss Brenda singing. Amen. amen. Bo's, look at Bo. Two suckers. Handful of handful of gummies. Boy, he's living the dream. Amen. Let's see here. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter number 22 tonight. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. I do appreciate y'all coming back. Amen. Uh, appreciate y'all being here, being faithful. Uh, there's something to say about faithfulness. Amen. Uh, it's a rare thing nowadays, but I appreciate y'all being faithful, being faithful to your church, being faithful to your pastor, and we appreciate it at Grace Baptist Church for sure. Amen. Uh, I don't know of any other place, Brother Bobby, I'd rather be on a Sunday night than in God's house. Amen. Uh, looking forward to the week to come, knowing getting ready to get back to work. I need some help. <laughs> Amen. I need some preaching. I need some singing. I need one last charge before I have to go back into uh, the pits. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate this church and what it stands for and y'all being faithful to uh, to come back to it on Sunday night and Wednesday nights uh, when other people choose not to. Amen. I appreciate that. Proverbs chapter number 22 tonight. I'm going to preach shortly tonight on on a thought that I, I've been thinking about a little bit this week. Uh, one night I was listening to uh, Kelly's cousin preach over at Victory uh, in Loganville. <clears throat> He's the pastor over there. And I was listening to one of his messages, and uh, something he said just kind of uh, got me to thinking a little bit about some things and how we respond to uh, circum certain circumstances in our life, you know, certain things that take place in our life, situations, and how we respond to them, and how quickly we, uh, how how the the manner in which we respond and. Uh, the things that we say, the things that we do. Uh, but I want us to look a little bit at, at, along those lines tonight if we can. Proverbs chapter number 22, the Bible says, in verse number 1, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor, rather than gold and silver. Silver and gold. Read that one more time. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor, rather than silver and gold. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and privilege that we that it is to be in your house. I thank you, God, that our church is open on Sunday nights. I'm, thank, I'm thankful tonight that, uh, Lord, we haven't shut the doors on Sunday nights. We haven't go, gone to some sort of small group program, but, Lord, we're still having church, and I'm thankful for that. And what I pray, God, that you'd help us to continue to uh, do that and keep the lights on and uh, keep growing. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us now for just a little while as we study your word. I pray, God, that you would uh, forgive us of our sins, our faults, and our failures. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us for a little while to just be attentive and listen. And, Lord, be responsive to the message tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you'd hide me behind the cross. Lord, use me, I pray. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, I do want to say I enjoy our choir and our special singers. Amen. I think we need to put a CD together, amen? Amen. amen. I w I'd like to have that right there, Miss Brenda just saying. I'd listen to that all the time going down the road, amen? Uh, but, yeah, we need we need to get us a CD together. Everybody in favor of that, say amen. <laughs> amen. All right, it's done. We're going to do it, amen? Proverbs 22. The Bible said, A good name is rather be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold, which is pretty much telling me a good name is is worth is worth more than than a dollar could ever pay. Amen. Having a good name, having someone know who you are and respect who you are just by your testimony and the fact that you've lived up to your testimony and that you've lived up to who you said that you were. Amen. Is that not a rare thing nowadays, brother Bobby, is for a man to say that he's a good man and actually live up to the fact that he's a hard worker or he's faithful? Or he he's he's uh, is what he says he is. Amen. It's rare. It's rare. 
It doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen all the time that you find somebody that when you shake their hand and they say they're going to do something that they actually do it when they say they're going to do it, how they say they're going to do it. Amen. But I appreciate those men that do. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. It does. And, I'm, and I appreciate it. I'm thankful for it. And we should all strive to be better at making our name better. Amen. Amen. But I want to talk about something tonight that I believe most of us are involved in. Uh, I know it's kind of an older crowd here tonight, not a lot of young people, but uh, I think this, uh, this area of, of our lives is pretty uh, common in everyone's life, and that's, uh, that's social media, amen? Most of us in here tonight have some sort of social media account. Would you, I'm, y'all just bear with me. I'm not preaching against it. Y'all just hang in there. Now, don't shut me down. I've got one. My wife, my, me and my wife, we share one. She's got all of them. <laughs> Amen. Instagram, she does it all. I'll see her in there. Looks like she's talking to herself. So who are you talking to? I'm putting something on Instagram. Oh, okay. You know. So I'm not, I'm not against it. Y'all understand. But I want us to be careful tonight. Now, three, uh, four things quickly that I think that we need to monitor ourselves and how we behave ourselves on online, on social media. Uh, number one, number one, if we monitor ourselves, there's a risk that can be decre- de- decreased. A risk that can be decreased. A lot of times when we uh, see something. <clears throat> going on, we see something happening, what's the first thing that we do? We pull out that phone, right? And we start videoing. I saw a video (laughs) this weekend. Uh, This poor fella was sitting in a Burger King (laughs) drive-thru. Somebody was videoing it from back, you know. He's sitting in a Burger King drive-thru. His his truck caught on fire. (laughs) So he's sitting out in front of his truck, probably for me to Brandon away, sitting on one of them big concrete lights, uh, you know, the base. He's sitting there, and he's just like watching his truck burn up. And uh, he had a propane tank in the back of that thing. I don't know if he just forgot about it (laughs) or what, but he's sitting there, and, man, he's just, you know, like, man, can today get any worse? And about that time, boom, his truck explodes. And man, I mean, just almost engulfs him in flames. You'd see him take off running. But what I don't understand is, and I'm guilty of it, we're all guilty of it, is the man filming, the man videoing the whole situation. Maybe he he probably saw something the other guy didn't. You ever get into a high adrenaline situation, you don't necessarily think like you, you you normally would if you were just on the outside looking in, right? So he's probably, his adrenaline's up. He's probably just sitting there thinking, man, I dodged a bullet on that one, you know, not really thinking about his truck being full of gas and a propane tank in the back. So the guy videoing just watches, boom, watches the thing explode and almost kill this man. So I'm thinking, why why didn't he walk up there and say, hey, man, let's let's get a safe distance back, you know? Tell, tell this fella, hey, won't you come back here and stand behind my truck? Well, you know, we'll wait on the firefighters or something, you know. But no, he saw it as an opportunity to video, right? Which tells me he's, he wasn't very much concerned about this man's human life. He was more concerned about, can I get some likes or shares or if I video this, they'll probably put it on the news. Right? So, we, we have to understand that um, there's some things that we can do and say on social media that can mess our testimony up for a very long time. There's a risk to having it. Now, I, I believe with all my heart, Brother Mike, there's good that comes from it. I believe that. Um, you can keep in touch with family members that live far away or whatever the case may be. But 
as I as as I get older now, the longer you have, I don't know how all the some of these other social media sites are, but Facebook, I know, the longer you have it. Each year that passes on that day, it'll show you what you posted on that day years ago. And some of the stuff that I posted when I was 18 is showing back up, and I'm thinking, man, how stupid was I? How dumb was I to get on there and actually type this out and share it with maybe not necessarily the world, but my world of people? How stupid was I? Right? Right? I want you to understand that in in um, a lot of times, in the moment, we can say things, we can do things, we can act a certain way that a year from now we might look back and just be totally ashamed of ourselves, <laughs> right? There's risk there, and I and you say, well, I don't have a social media. Okay, maybe your grandkids do. Maybe your kids do. We need to monitor what goes on. Amen. You say, what's this? You know, this is kind of a strange message for a Sunday night. Well, it's it's something that needs to be addressed in our, I believe, in our churches. Amen. Not necessarily that we have a problem in our church, but we just got to be careful got to be careful be careful of the things that you say <laughs> I think about the preacher when he first got his Facebook y'all remember that <laughs> he was trying to sell a washing washer and dryer you remember, you remember what I'm talking about <laughs> it was a mess brother it was a mess <laughs> I don't know listen I don't know it had <laughs> yeah it had it had two or three words in there. I was like, what in the world? So I called a preacher. I said, what are you selling? He said, what are you talking about? I said, you might want to get on there and read that thing. And it just auto-typed its own sentence out there. And he was just, he said, oh, my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> now, we have, to be, we have to be careful. Now, not obviously the preacher didn't do that on purpose. I hope, anyways, amen. <laughs> but sometimes we'll get mad. We'll even get mad, Brother Greg, at a family member. We'll get on there. I've done it. Me and my brothers got so mad at each other. It'll start on Facebook. Me and him's not the type, though, to finish it there. We'll finish it <laughs> for real. <laughs> you know, we've gotten mad at each other and parents or whatever the case may be. But I want you to understand. Now, here's what I'm talking about. In your, on your, how many of you know that on your profile on there, it tells you where where your job is, right? It tells where you work. It tells, it, but a lot of times now, brother Gary with the GPS, it'll show that right now I'm at Grace Baptist Church on Sunday night. It shows where I'm at, my location. So it shows on there that. Uh, Jesse Bragg was at Grace Baptist Church on Sunday and Sunday morning, Sunday night. But then, what if I was to go to work Monday and carry on like, you know, like I hadn't been at church all day on Sunday? People are going to say, well, you was at church yesterday, but you're acting a fool today. Amen. We got to be careful. There's, there's risk there. Not only that, but I want us to, especially some of you parents and grandparents maybe having kids that are getting a little bit older, teenagers, pre-teenage. We have to be careful on, uh, and, and aware that there's people out there trying to prey on our kids. Be careful what you put on there. You Listen, I might put an innocent picture of my son on there or my daughter. But you have to understand, there's people that all they do is these these people that, these pedophiles, they prey on kids, and they just go to different, and they can see, they, they pull these pictures off of people's profiles, and every, it happens now. Your child's picture may be somewhere on some site, 
somewhere. And then they know where you go to church. They know where you work. And this is what's happening, Brother Bobby. Let me tell you how messed up this world is. There's people that are preying on our kids. They're, they're looking to see where you are. They take these pictures pretty much just like a... I've, I've seen this, all right? This is not nothing I'm making up. This is real. There was a man that was arrested. I can't say who, where. But he had a little thumb drive, Brother Greg. And it was like a black market. Put the thumb drive in the computer. We're going through it at the sheriff's office. And it had uh, pictures. You could buy anything you want. Kids, uh, women, children, drugs, all this. Just like, a, just like eBay. You just get on there and bid. So they're saying what some of them are doing is they're watching people's families, like in this, like say in this community, they'll watch people's Facebooks, see who has children and things like that. People will bid on them, and then they try to try to take these kids and sell them to these individuals. That's the world we live in. Listen, that's so we have to be careful. We have to be careful. You gotta be careful where we go, what we say. We have risk in those regards. Amen. <clears throat> Y'all still with me? Secondly, we have a reputation reputation that can be protected. Reputation that can be protected. Just like I was just saying. If I say that I'm a member of Grace Baptist Church and I'm always sharing that I'm going on a trip with Grace Baptist Church and so on and so on and I'm I'm here we're doing a work day at Grace Baptist Church but we're on there I've seen it <laughs> from I've seen it from people that well I'll, I'll keep moving you got to be somebody be on a, another page another site that'll man they'll be on there cussing somebody out <laughs> letting them have it But it shows up, Brother Mike, on my feed because I'm friends with that person. So it shows what kind of activity they're doing. It shows me. <laughs> so there was a gentleman, I won't say who, the, he, he doesn't go here anymore. <laughs> he, he was on a news site cussing somebody out. But I, I saw, we saw it and I was like, Kelly, <laughs> can you believe can you believe this? And she's like, well, maybe he just didn't know that he was going to, we were going to see it. You know, I was like, well, we saw it. We sure enough saw it. I was like, preacher. <laughs> Preacher's like, ah, you know, I'll handle it. <laughs> but you got to be careful. There's, there's a reputation that we try to uphold here at Grace Baptist Church, all of us. I'm not talking about just me and prayer. I'm talking about all of us, right? We have a reputation, a testimony that when we go out there and we tell somebody we come from Grace Baptist Church, we want them to know that we mean business, that we love people, that we care about them. But you can also get that reputation very quickly. Oh, that, that guy's from Grace. He's that one that was on there cussing out the news guy on Fox 5. <laughs> you say, well, how, you know, that, no, they could never see. Man, you understand how big social media is. And it's getting, but then it's getting more and more advanced. You ever, here's a, here's just to show you how advanced it's getting. You ever be, have you ever been talking about something with, with your spouse? And you get on Facebook and, and there's an ad for that in, in your feed? It's insane. Me and Kelly, preacher, we were talking about buying both some new shoes. Talking about it. We weren't at a store. We weren't and all. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not kidding you. I open up Facebook 
and there's ads for toddlers Nikes in the Facebook feed. It's terrifying. <laughs> now, if you go in a if you go in a store, they have said that they have said that GPS now can track where you go. So if you go in a store and you stand in a certain aisle for a certain amount of time, it kind of keeps up with all that, and it'll put ads in there. Like if I'm at if I'm at Lowe's, I'm standing in the plumbing aisle. I go back maybe two or three times a month to that same. It'll start putting ads in there for plumbing materials in my Facebook feed. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of ads for buffets and stuff. <laughs> they don't. I don't get many ads for treadmills and <laughs> ellipticals in mine. It's all about you're reaching the next buffet, turn right. <laughs> but it's it's uh just to prove that point again, we when I started working back at the pest control company, after about a week I started seeing ads in my Facebook for pesticide materials. I have not typed in anything, but it just shows where I'm at every day at that office. It gets with Google. Google knows what it is and so on. It's so advanced. So it can pick up your interest and your likes and it tries to match you up with other people of the same interest and same likes. So it might not be anybody that you've ever met, but you'll get a friend request or something from somebody you've never even met before. You think, Who is this? And you open it up and you find out, oh, they live in Watkinsville. They go to church. They have the same interest that you do because it's linking you together. I'm trying to put people of like interest together. So my point behind that is somebody might see you that you don't even know. They're going, and, and if you're like me, you get that friend request, I get on there and see who they are. I'll go through their pictures and all that stuff, make sure it ain't some kind of crazy junk. See what they're about. I don't know them, but they live close by and they have the same interest that I do. And more than likely, they probably did the same thing for me. So now they're looking through my Facebook to see what I'm about. And there's a chance that well, this guy's a preacher. He was just out at my house doing my pest control last week. And he didn't look like, he didn't act like no preacher. Y'all get what I'm saying? You, most of y'all in here saying, well, I don't even have social media. Help your kids. Amen. Help them understand that a good name is ready to be chosen. Amen. Help your grandkids understand that. Brother Mike, there used to be a time when older men would set down younger men, whether it be their son, grandson, or not, and explain to them the value of their name. Explain to them the value of a handshake, the value of, of being able to talk to somebody and, and be, be a man of your word and living up to your testimony. We don't have that much anymore. I need somebody, you know, you know how kids are. When, when they get older, they don't want to, you know, they know it all. They don't want to listen to their dad <laughs> tell them what to do. Somebody's going to have to set bow down, preacher. Listen, look, I, I know I'm not your dad, but look, a good name's going to be chosen over. Explain to him. Explain to him what a handshake means. What his word means. Y'all get what I'm saying? So you say, well, I don't have kids. I don't have social media. You can help somebody. Amen. Some of you ladies, listen to me. Some of you godly women need to help some of our gir young girls. Amen. Some of these these girls that come in off the on the buses and things like that, they, they need some guidance. Amen. They need to know what a reputation is. Because some of them already young, am I right, Tony, are building a reputation that they're going to carry with them the rest of their lives, and it's not a good one. We need to help. We need to help them, amen. 
Thirdly, responsibility that can be learned. Responsibility that can be learned. We need to understand that there is a responsibility that we hold to our church, to our family, to our kids, to our spouse, to our pastor. I mean, he said this morning he got a vision 21 years ago to start this church, and he's been faithful to this church. He and his wife and his family, listen, they, they, listen, they have the testimony of when you think about Ed Strickland and Miss Brennan Strickland, you think Grace Baptist Church. And that's what everybody in this community thinks. So we have a responsibility to them. We have a responsibility to this church. We have a responsibility to, to, to the Lord to hold a good name. Amen. One of the funniest things, it's not, it wasn't funny, but it, 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 it kind of was. This boy, some knucklehead boy that went to school with us, preacher. <laughs> Front page of the McDowell Times up in Marion, North Carolina. Big rock concert comes to Asheville or somewhere up there. <laughs> and it was on the front page. Matt, you know, huge rock concert comes to our area. Who's on the front? This boy. What's he wearing? A new man, a t-shirt. Brother Tony Shirley about had a small stroke. Rock concert. New man of, new man of Christian Academy. With his name on the back. I'm like, oh my goodness. I thought Brother Tony was going to kill that boy. I mean, just, you don't never, you never know where, where you are, who's taking a picture, who, who, who's seeing you. You know, you don't know. You don't know. The other day when that huge flood came and all that rain we got, there were some people uh, taking pictures of, you know, cars underwater and submerged. <laughs> well, I'm looking at them, you know. I think it was on one of the news, Channel 2 or something. I'm looking at them. All of a sudden, there's... Clark Pest Remedy with me and my boss standing on the front porch watching this lady try to walk through this water and her car is totally submerged and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. They're going to wonder, why did, Why wasn't them guys helping this poor woman? But what the story doesn't tell is is everyone else was turning around going the other way. This woman in a small Ford Focus <laughs> Decides she's going to brave it, you know. She just backs up, and all of a sudden it just, whoosh, that's it. So she gets out with an umbrella, this deep in water. <laughs> Had to get the umbrella. This deep in water, pops that umbrella up. And I see her going to the back seat, and I said, no. I told my boss, I said, Matt, I know she don't have a child with her in that car sure enough hikes that baby on there and she's walking through the water with the umbrella <laughs> but you have to be careful man because we, we didn't see anybody out there taking pictures and all that but there it was just that quick we got to be careful There's, we have a responsibility and nowadays, you know that as soon as something happens, as soon as something happens, and people even think something's about to happen, what do they do? They pull this phone out. They start videoing. Somebody, somebody could be laying there dying, and they're like this right here. Instead of calling 911, they're like, hey, somebody call 911. This person's hurt. But they want to get the video. They got to get the footage. So maybe somebody will share it or they'll put it and they can get their little five minutes of fame. Hey, man, look. That boy's getting beat up by five other boys. He's getting bullied. 
bullying in America right here. And they're videoing it. Instead of stepping in and doing something. It shows the it, listen to me. It shows the it shows the condition of of our society and how poor we are and how much we've declined as a as humanity. When somebody can be laying on the ground dying, their head busted open, we're gonna stand there with the phone and video it. Me and my wife were talking the other day, one of Somebody we know real well, older man, I, I guess he's probably in his 80s now. He's got dementia real bad, real bad. And he plays with a baby doll, Brother Mike. That's how bad it's gotten. He thinks he's a kid. And his daughter was videoing it and putting it on social media. I don't think she meant any harm by it. But listen to me, five years ago, if that man would have seen himself in that condition, oh, he'd have, he'd have had a meltdown. There are certain things that, listen to me, we just need to keep to ourselves. She was stripping him of his dignity. I don't think she was doing it on purpose. But there are certain things, listen to me, that just need to be between you or you and your family, or you and God, we don't have to share everything. We don't have to post everything. Just stop sometimes and enjoy where you are. That's what I, I was listening to Derek over there at Victory, and that's what he said. He said, be here now. He said, that's what he tells his kids sometimes. Be here <laughs> Put your phone down, shut it off, and be here now. Nowadays, Brother Jim, kid will be standing in front of the Grand Canyon looking at pictures of, of the East Coast beach. Like, oh, man, it's so pretty out there. Like, dude, you're standing in front of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> we forget about everything that's going on around us. I'm guilty of it. Don't, don't think I'm just preaching to you. There's been times I've been sitting there, Brother Greg, scrolling through Facebook, and it's just the same stupid, brainless stuff. And Bo will be sitting there, Daddy, 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 with a baseball in his hand, Daddy, let's throw, Daddy. And I, and I realize he's been sitting there saying my name for five minutes, and I just ain't even in the world. We have a responsibility to turn this stuff off and be with our families. Be in the situation. Be in the be where you are in that moment. Be enjoy it. Me and a buddy of mine was having breakfast this week at Waffle House, and I saw a grandfather who had taken his grandson to breakfast, Brother Greg. And the whole time, this man, he's sitting there, and that kid's over there on his phone. And he's going to think back one of these days, maybe, I don't know, some kids don't even care now. But he's going to sit back and think, man, I wish I'd just put that phone down and had five more minutes with my granddad. Just five minutes. I was at a house this week. Brother Mike, a four, he's a four-star general in the United States Army. General Bar Burba is his name. I was talking to him and talking about all his accomplishments, pictures, all his stuff. He had pictures of him and the pre presidents and Japanese presidents, whatever they are over there. All his pur purple hearts and all, I mean, this man's a four-star general. His kids and grandkids sitting there on the, on the phone. I'm thinking, man, 
Y'all don't even know what y'all are missing. He went up to his office, and I said, Mr. Perver, you, I said, you spend a lot of time up here. He said, he said, yeah, he said, the way, you know, things go, he said, nobody wants to, you know, everybody just kind of does their own thing. All right, wow. This man could probably write 10 books on the stories and things that he's done with his life, and nobody wants to even sit down and talk to him. We get caught up in all the things that's going on around us and social media and everything. We just forget about what's happening now. Here. How many of us are guilty of this? Somebody standing there talking to us and we got our phone. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Let me send this text and I'll get with you. Had a customer that this week call he called us now with a problem. I get out there and the entire time that I'm trying to explain to him the solution and how we can he's sitting there on his phone. I finally said, Look, when you get a minute, let me know and I'll explain the situation. And he just kind of looked at me. He was from California. I said, When you get a minute, let me know. I, I said, We'll get this thing figured out. Sorry. Thank you. Now, because if, if I wouldn't have done that, I would have left. He wouldn't have heard anything I said. And then he'd have been calling back the next day. Hey, this problem's still here. He ain't done nothing. Or maybe he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have said ain't. He just said, these guys didn't do anything. <laughs> Walking around, wearing, him and his boys wearing, uh, wearing swimming trunks and flip-flops. Like, man, you're in Georgia, bud. <laughs> about time to get you some jeans and boots <laughs> flip flops and swimming trunks 50 years old got, got studs in his ears <laughs> studs in a chin strap he's like what's up I'm like nothing what's going on <laughs> anyway that's beside the point chasing rabbits now lastly and I'm done this is a good thing here. You say, preacher, you got anything good to say? <laughs> yeah. Relationships that can be strengthened. Relationships that can be strengthened. Now, in just a few weeks, we got friend day. Let's share it. Let's use social media for something positive. Friend day. You can also get on there and keep in touch. Like I say, you can keep in touch with family members, friends. It's a good thing. But we have to be careful, church. We have to be careful. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to that man right there. We have a responsibility to the Lord and this church. To uphold a good name. It's important. It's important. It's dying. That ideology is like ancient times. That concept of, of being who you say you are and being the man, that, all that is briskly going out the window. I mean, a lot of kids nowadays just sit in front of a game and just don't know what it's like to work. So if if child labor come by my house some days, they'd lock me up, bro, Jim. <laughs> I'll have Bo out there work with a full-grown wheelbarrow picking up sticks out of the yard. And by the way, he knows what he's doing. Amen. It's not foreign to him. <clears throat> we have a responsibility to uphold a good name I want my son to understand that amen 
Brother Jim, if he says he's going to be somewhere, I want him to be there. I, I, I want to get better at it. If I say I'm going to do something for somebody, I want to do it. And I want us to be honest and say, look, if, if we can't do it, don't tell somebody you can. <laughs> That's our problem. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there, knowing good and well <laughs> that you already got plans and everything, and you're going to wait till the last minute, text them and say, hey, I ain't going to make it. I got plans. I forgot all about it. <laughs> I want us to be, I want our church to be that. Amen. Not that we're not. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we say we're going to get those Potter's House guys. We go get them. Every Sunday, they they know we're going to show up. (laughs) You know, Brother Watkins, you know, they know he's going to be at the jail. They know Brother Mike's going to be teaching Sunday school. They know preacher's going to be preaching. They said, they know. Choir's going to be singing. We're going to be here. We're going to be here. Amen. I want us to be that. Because there's a lot of churches, listen to me. <clears throat> I'm almost done. They'll show up on Sunday night. Visitors, they don't even know. The, the, the doors will be locked. Where's, the, where's, the, where's everybody at? Oh, we canceled tonight. We just decided it was, you know. <laughs> we just decided it was <clears throat> we're gonna do we're gonna have a small group meeting at the preacher's house and he's gonna grill hot dogs. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> yeah, preacher <laughs> pork chops, amen. Putting on a brisket. <laughs> he's putting on a brisket. Amen, let's all stand.